Hey everyone, welcome back to Clinical Physio with me, Khalid Maidan. In this video, we're going to discuss the classic presentation of a long head of biceps tendinopathy. So first of all, the biceps brachii muscle has two heads. A short head, because it covers a slightly smaller area from origin to insertion, and a long head, considered to be the bigger of the two as the name suggests. It's the proximal tendon of the long head, which amongst different shoulder injuries is much more frequently irritated than that of the short head. And it is the tendon of this long head of biceps that we're going to be examining today, which sits very snugly here in the bicepital groove of the humerus. If you wanted to palpate the long head of biceps tendon, this would be the place to do it. So clues that your patient may report in their subjective history that may indicate a long head of biceps tendinopathy are likely to be those that suggest a pattern of increased tendon loading. These may include a sudden increase in activity, such as your patient's first time back in the gym doing dumbbells after having the winter off. Perhaps a sudden burst of overload, such as when moving house where there is significant repeated lifting in one day, particularly overhead. Or perhaps a sudden increase in repetitive use, again particularly overhead activities, such as a window cleaner who has had a sudden increase in workload in the last two weeks. Furthermore, one of the most common reasons the long head of biceps tendon is in a state of overworking is when patient's shoulders become more protracted, whereby the anterior chain of the shoulder start to work a lot harder than the posterior chain of the shoulder. So for diagnosis, you would need to go through your objective assessment and clear the neck because a brachial plexus irritation can present with pain in the anterior shoulder, just like a long head of biceps tendinopathy. You would then need to assess the shoulder as well as the elbow. You may then go on to do some special tests, which should include speeds test, as shown here, where the patient's shoulder is flexed with forearm supination and their upward movement of the arm is resisted with the downward movement of the therapist. A positive result in this test would be an increase in pain at the long head of biceps tendon. So finally on to management. It's really important to educate your patient, to explain what the problem is and that it often starts with a sudden burst of tendon loading. It is then important to advise your patient on how to reduce the loading of the tendon within their activities and that failing to do so may limit their improvement as the tendon can remain in a state of disrepair or reactive inflammation. It may also be beneficial to ask your patient with an acute tendinopathy to liaise with their GP for advice and potentially for prescription of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication. And finally, the rehab phase of management. This requires a gradual increase in tendon loading, both in terms of their hobbies and activities and in terms of exercise prescription. You may start with some isometric exercises before progressing to eccentric and then concentric exercises. You can progress individual exercises by making them either based on short lever rehab or long lever rehab. You can also progress the weight and repetition used in your exercises. Top tip. If you find you have been rehabbing the long head of biceps tendon with no progress at all, or if you find that this muscle is very strong as well as painful, this may be because the biceps is working too hard because something else nearby is not. Think about what we said earlier about the patient with protracted shoulders who may be utilizing more of the anterior chain. For this individual, strengthening of the posterior chain, for example, rear deltoid raises or lower trap strengthening may be what is needed to give the long head of biceps a bit of a break. Like with all tendinopathies, it is important to consider what the tendon needs to do. What activities does the patient engage in? How much weight do they need to lift in their work or hobbies? These questions can be used as a guide from which you tailor your patient's rehabilitation. So that's it from me. Thank you as always for watching and for all our best tips and videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on social media, or join us again at clinicalphysio.com.